So, as the title says, guys, we're eating burritos. Wrapped in a spinach wrap, a little bit of ground beef with some seasoning in there, onions, tomatoes, some salsa, some hot sauces, some other things, some other things, some some kale instead of lettuce i had a bag of some like chopped up whatever kale so i just threw that in there uh cheese all kind of good stuff guys cheese baby please baby so on this taco tuesday i'm not eating tacos but i am eating burritos can't go wrong with that guys Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Throw me over there in that corner. So, had a good day. So far, so good with my bus route this year. Kids don't seem to be too crazy this year. Maybe the maybe the Rona chilled them out. How did some fall on there? Well, I'm a little disappointed in myself. Me and my wife decided it was time to go ahead and get the shot. And I'm kind of disappointed with myself that I fell and I kind of fell for it. Not good to do. I don't think it was a good idea. But as you can see, I got a webpage pulled up here that I go to once in a while. It's called Good News Network. I like to go there sometimes because, well, it's good news. Looks like I might have one viewer. I don't know. If I do, say hi in the chat. Let me know. One of the worst things about having a beard like this is not just getting food in it. When you're trying to eat something like this, you're shoving beard hair in your mouth. No telling how much beard hair I've ate. Well, I'm 
my training's going pretty good so far. Still. As some of you know and some of you don't, I stopped cycling after five and a half years. I just got tired of fighting the traffic and time restraints with everything that I'm doing, with walking and working out and riding bikes. They're just taking so long. I've kind of switched over to just spinning. Got a trainer for my bike, you know, you put the back wheel in it. And so that's what I'm doing these days. And uh, it's all going good. I uh, lost some weight. Of course, I've already done my spin and my walk today. Did it this morning. And I did pretty good. I jogged just a little bit this morning. I don't jog far because my back and, and my hips ain't great. My back's horrible and my yeah, my hips are horrible. <laughs> so, I don't really jog far if I do. Like light post to light post or driveway to driveway. Something kind of close and with ease. But today I did it three separate times during my walk. It felt pretty good. I still got a workout tonight. Did uh, did legs yesterday. And today I'll probably be doing chest. Get that done. Get it out the way. Boy, I love burritos. Burritos, wraps, tacos, taco salad. Mmm. It's good stuff. Can't hardly beat it. This is good. Mm-mm. Except the tortilla is falling apart. I don't know about you guys, but my tortillas always pop a leak or bust open. Still good. Just a little messy. Mm. Good stuff. Just looking at this headline right here. Let's go ahead and click on it. Researchers identify a fearsome dragon with 23 foot wingspan that soared over Australia outback. No duh. If anybody's going to have anything like a dragon, it's going to be Australia. Right? It figures. They get everything. I mean, I guess that's good news. I don't know if that's real good news for Australia, but I guess that's good news for the rest of the world that, you know, we didn't have to deal with it, maybe. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Boy, that's good.
Freedom number two. Get me powered up for my workout. A little bit later. So supposedly, it inhabited every continent during the later part of the age of dinosaurs. And we gotta take all that with a grain of salt sometimes. What they tell us about dinosaurs now, I mean, I believe dinosaurs are real. I'm not saying that. I mean, like, facts and stuff on them. Because they change all the time with facts. Yeah, I've heard that people are starting to do this. Ditch your hard to grow lawn and start cultivating moss instead. I've heard that some people are starting to do that. Like take a you know take off their the layer of their normal, you know, grass and plant moss. Cause it only grows so high. Moss is pretty too. Not that grass ain't pretty. even edible moss mm-hmm pretty cool two-headed turtle
massive balloon the size of a stock soccer stadium to launch telescope to the edge of space to study how stars form. Well, don't we already have telescopes here that do that? And don't we already have a telescope floating around out in space that that's been taking pictures and videos and stuff and all that for years? Something like that. Sad to be done with my burrito. Hmm. That's good. Boy. One thing's for certain, I can make some decent food, guys. So the telescope is going to rival the huddle, the Hubble telescope. Well, the Hubble's actually flying around through space. So I think it has a heads up there. This is only going to go so high from what I understand. We're never going to know how things are done. We're never going to know the history and the beginnings of the earth. No matter what anyone tries to come up with or hypothesis. No religion, no Bibles, no nothing like that. Nobody knows anything. It's just such an, uh, an, a, a mystery. It's such an enigma. Nobody knows. And that's crazy to think that, you know, we're never going to know some things. You know, we're not meant to know everything. It's okay to say, hey, I don't know. But for some reason, humans like to think that they know everything. they got to feel the need to know everything. I'm okay with saying I'm stupid. I don't know. And then again, it's not necessarily stupidity. I wasn't around then. So, you know. Ugh. Sorry about that. All the hot sauce and stuff I use gets me going. I've always enjoyed space. I've always been intrigued by it. As I think many people are. Because it's just something that, you know, we're never going to be a part of. We're never going to know anything about the entirety of our universe, you know. And I think that we're going to be wiped out as a species before we even get a chance to try to do anything significant. We're, we're destroying our planet. It's hotter. A lot of areas are, you know, out west are dry and they're burning, and ice caps are melting, and everything ice birds and.
Boy, those are good burritos. Mm -mm -mm. So, I've not really announced it anywhere other than just kind of with my family. But I got a new channel that's happening on uh, YouTube. And uh, it's going to involve me and my family. Hopefully as much as my family as I can get involved. And uh, it's going to be kind of fun. It's like uh, if you're a fan of board games and like Uno and old TV game shows from the 70s and 80s and that. And then you're going to enjoy it because we're going to try and kind of do our own rendition of some of the stuff. Uh, along with playing some of the board games and, you know, kind of doing stuff and just kind of having fun and kind of showing people what it was like, you know, to do these things. Uh, cause we, we've, uh, we've always played board games and stuff like that, you know, back in the 80s and through the 90s and then, you know, some now in the 2000s still we try and, and uh, it's just something that's kind of fun. And uh, the name of the, the channel's called A Step Back. So it's pretty cool. Matter of fact, I could play the video, a little intro, if you want me to. That'll be kind of interesting. Let me do that. Ooh, look! There's my two channels, my main channels right now Old Mental Pickle and Mikey Sun TV. Please subscribe to those if you would. If you don't mind. If and you don't mind subscribing, um, is this it? No. Do I not have it saved? I thought I had it saved. Hmm. Where you at? There's that. That, 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 that. Where the heck is it? Now here I am on live stream, not knowing where my video is. Oh, maybe it's in here. There it is. Duh. How's everyone doing? Check this out. How's everyone doing? Welcome to A Step Back, where we take a step back in time to enjoy classic family fun with board games, TV shows, and more with our own spin. So sit down, strap in, and get ready to take A Step Back. Huh? How'd you like that, guys? Pretty good stuff, huh? Come on now. Get out of my way. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, let me go ahead and show you something else whilst we're in here. Why not? So, of course, I have all my normal t-shirts that I've been selling for a while. I don't sell any, but I got them for sale. Here's my newest one. For my main channel, Mikey Sun TV. I like it. I think it's cool. Get up, get out, get rad, do it to it. That's my saying. Get up, get out, get rad, do it to it. Everybody knows that. YouTube, Mikey Sun TV. It's cool stuff, guys. Positive message. My channel's positive. Everything I do is somewhat positive, guys. Here's another one. Old Mental Pickle. That's where I live stream video games only. That's my channel that I do that on. That's front, that's back. Old Mental Pickle. All my t-shirts are a whopping $30. Mike, E, son, why are they $30? Well, you pay $30 for a Nike t-shirt with a swish on it. Mine at least has nice images and good meaning and... Uh, a good positive message to get up, get out, get ready, do it to it. And even old mental pickles, a good positive channel. It's where we live stream video games and hang out and have a good time. I'm drinking.
drinking lemonade. I don't ever really drink lemonade at home. If I do drink lemonade whenever I go out to eat, it's because they don't have Sprite. Usually every day for supper I have a can of Sprite, but I'm out of Sprite. But luckily I had some out of date uh, lemonade in there. And to be honest, it has less calories than the Sprite, which is weird, but there you go. This is one of my newer shirts here too. I got one for myself. I like that. It's very hip in my opinion. Very hip. And it has this logo on the back. On the back upper. It's kind of below the collar there. The DITI logo. Do it to it. Got some good shirts here, guys. You ought to uh, support me. I, I try to do good content and put out good, positive things and, and uh, stuff that we need more on the internet and in our lives. Man, I had a good supper, guys. Two big old sweet burritos and a cup of lemonade. Hmm. You don't get a whole lot better than that. Good positive day when you can have good positive food. Look at that beautiful face. Look at that. Anyway. $30, guys, gets you one of my shirts. It goes, anything I get will go towards my channel, it'll go towards my room, my workout room, you know, this office by getting some more collectibles and some cool stuff that I can uh, get back here and show to people, stuff that I love, and uh, maybe get me a new camera or a new whatever I need. Any money I get can go to, you know, uh, my channels and what I'm trying to do, and, and believe it or not, it takes money time and effort to throw videos together got a new computer got workout got all kind of stuff in here I've built all this I built my desk you know I'm remodeling the uh, uh, the closet in here I got it all painted and I got one shelf in there still got to get about four Probably about four more shells, maybe five, and put in there uh, so I can get some more kind of cool stuff. I want to get some, like, just a handful of stuff. I'm not really a collector. I don't like collecting stuff, uh, even though you'll see some stuff around in my room if I were to show you. You can go and look at my channel, uh, Mikey Sun TV. Um, I have stuff in here, but I'm not really a big collector. Like, literally on this shelf right here, I could pick out probably one thing that I would keep if I had to take it if I had to choose and that would be my lost TV show you know TV show lost my blu-ray special collection it would be that over here would be a little bit more difficult because I'm just now collecting uh, masters of the universe action figures again since I was a kid so this is the first time I've started you know collecting now uh, with the new Netflix series that's out uh, the revelations so That'd be a hard one to choose because, you know, I'm just now getting into that. And that's some of what's going to be in that closet is uh, some more Masters of the Universe stuff. And I want to collect maybe a couple of old uh, vinyl records that uh, maybe I had as a kid or, or just some bands or groups or something like that or, you know, musical artists or whatever, you know, that, that I like. And, uh, and maybe the, the album covers are really cool and kind of neat looking. I don't want to get a bunch. I was considering trying to get into vinyl and uh, collect it, you know, and kind of get a nice little collection going and enjoying it and that. And I don't know. Maybe I will sometime, but who knows. Uh, for right now, it's just kind of about, you know, decorating and kind of nostalgia and kind of stuff that really means something to me and not just random stuff. I don't like collecting like I said, it's just it, just clutter and takes up so much room and it gets dusty and dirty and 
and if there's a fire, you lose everything. You a tornado, you lose everything. Someone breaks into your house, you lose everything. So I don't like having a lot of stuff to worry about, you know? It's just kind of... I don't know, it's kind of... It's, it takes the fun away from it. And then you're getting older, and if I die, the people got to take care of all my stuff and, and all that kind of crap. So I don't really like having a lot of stuff. And before I got <coughs> my new computer and did this room all up all cool and my workout room, got all new stuff, you know, to work out with. And before I did this over the past few months, I practically had nothing. I had a laptop and I had my original Xbox from 2001 and a almost original PlayStation 2. That's really about all I had, you know, outside of just a few little things that that's really all I had and uh, you know if anything were to happen then that's all I would have to grab and go you know I think of stuff you know that's just how I am I think of things and and uh, <coughs> once you start acquiring stuff then it becomes a whole big ordeal so anyway I know you probably don't care to hear all that but you know that's just how it goes We can look at this. This is got a. This gives you a glimpse of uh, the shirts that I offer as well. Now you've seen this one, and there's the DITI logo up there, like I said. And this one here, that's just a big picture to kind of show you what this picture is. So, uh, and I made that image. That wasn't easy to do, to find hands and try to piece them together and get them to work right and it looks pretty decent I have a shirt with that it looks decent uh, it's okay this one here does pretty good I have a shirt with that on there as well this one works out a little better and I have a shirt with this on there I don't have a shirt I don't have this shirt yet uh, I need to get this one made for myself but a, a lot of the ones a lot of the shirts that I have are vinyl and I don't like the vinyl stuff I like having the like dye sublimation inks and stuff like that because vinyl is just heavy and it's thick and it's just kind of eh. that's what most of my shirts are I've only got a couple that are dye sub and uh, I like them a lot better but you'll notice right here t-shirts are $30 hoodies are 50 uh, if you want something you PayPal me at mikeyson71 at gmail.com uh, let me know your address your size uh, your color that you want and we'll go from there you know the design that you want all that good stuff I think it's uh, I think they're really cool and they have a good message behind them and it's it's better than going to Walmart or Target or whatever other stores out there where there's 50 million people in the world with the exact same shirt running around you know my stuff has meaning it's it's fun I think it looks classy for t-shirts that have decor on them you know I think I think they're done really well and and it, it comes off uh, it comes off looking good whenever you have it on so I'm pretty happy with them I don't really sell any. Whenever I first started doing my shirts, uh, I had a few sales going on. It's mostly family and, you know, some people, you know, maybe that I just met that were interested and, you know, just trying to support me. And I probably sold 20 something. I probably sold 20 shirts, 20 something in the beginning. And uh, of course, it dies down and, and all that. But it's something I'd really like to get out there and leave my name and leave my mark in the world, you know, for whenever I die. Uh, I'd like for that to continue going on and, and uh, continue to inspire people to what? Get up, get out, get ran, do it to it, you know? And even the old mental pickle, like I said, is a positive channel, you know? Uh, doing something you love and you enjoy, your passions and your hobbies can be uh, video games as well. <clears throat> you need to mix some other stuff in there, you know, do some art, some photography, color, you know, go for a walk, D uh, 
have a garden. Do something, you know, that's uh, that's gonna give you something good for your mind, body, and soul, and and uh, make you happy that you're alive and and all that good stuff. And uh, you know, we're we're here but a short time on this earth, and uh, it shouldn't just be about stress and going to work and have you got enough money for bills and you know politics and religion and controversial news stuff and things that they're that are just hounding you to death. That's not what we're here for, guys. We're not here long enough to care about all these things. You should be enjoying yourself and living your life and having a good time. So that's what my ch that's what both my channels are about. That's what my Facebook uh, that's what my Facebook is about. Um, it's been a long time since I've posted anything controversial or you know debatable or or all these kind of different things that used to bother me because I just got to realizing. You know, one day it just kind of clicked in my head. Like, you know what? These things just don't matter. Um, but the, the bad thing is, what I found out is more people respond to that kind of stuff than they do uh, positivity. I don't, you know, I post positive good stuff on my Facebook all day long. I've only got about 40 friends uh, in my friends list and but I don't get any interaction or anything really uh, with anything but the second that I post anything controversial any kind of thing in the news or my thoughts on religion or politics or all these things then instantly people bite they jump and that saddens me because uh, People would rather be a part of controversy and debates and arguments and that kind of stuff than they would just good positive content. And that's uh, unfortunate, but it's what I'm finding to be true. Um, what I'm considering doing is searching Facebook for groups, just different groups of things that I'm interested in. And mostly posting in there, or maybe even trying to friend some people from from groups like that that I have something in common with. Because really, like I said, nobody nobody takes part in anything. And uh, here's my thing. This is what I started doing quite a while back, long time back. Um, if I friend somebody and I see that they're posting good stuff, I'm good. I continue following them and I'll, you know, give them a like and I might say, cool, you know, neat, good job, you know, hey, that's interesting or, you know, whatever. But if I notice that the people are just posting like religion and politics and newsy type stuff and all these things, if it's, and if it's, and if they're posting just a senseless, stupid meme after senseless, stupid meme. Uh, they're posting garbage, uh, you know, like adult kind of related type stuff and just complete garbage all the time. Anything that is in those topics or at all, I unfollow them. And eventually I unfriend them. <clears throat> because there's no sense in being a part of that world if you don't connect with it, you know. Um, the only uh, uh, thing... I'm forgetting the word that I'm looking for, but uh, it, if my family posts stuff like that, I don't unfriend them, but I will unfollow them. So, you know, I have some sisters and a brother that, you know, that's what they post, and so I unfollow them, but I'm still friends with them. I love them to death. They're my family. They're my siblings. You know, I even have a niece that, that I've had to unfollow because... She's constantly posting religious and stuff like that, and it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't care about all that. I want good, positive, decent stuff in my life. And that's it. And for me, politics and religion and anything controversial, newsy, debatey is not positive. None of it. And I, I just don't want anything to do with it. It's not what I care to be around. So, I wish more people would just post decent stuff but boy 
you see what people post online and it's it's crazy it really is crazy guys it's unfortunate look at that ain't that pretty I'm so pretty so let's get back to a little bit of good news let's see if we can find something else that's good and positive to look at uh, the large fleet of trucks that runs on whiskey waste. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Mom sparks creative imagination in kids with her toys made from cardboard boxes. I'm going to click on that because that touches me right here in the old feels and the nostalgia factor. Now, when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, 10 through 20, whatever, uh, we had encyclopedias and we also had some other books that were, a, you know, a set of some kind of books. I don't know what they were exactly, but they were interesting books. And I remember we had this one book that had cardboard ideas like that where it showed you how to make like forts and just kind of different stuff with boxes and I remember being a kid and always going to that book and looking through there and thinking oh that'd be so cool to do that and that's neat and that's you know because every kid heck even up to your 20 years old no matter you like little forts you like kind of feeling secure and kind of in your own little world and uh, your imagination runs wild and it's just fun to kind of uh, kind of get away and uh, I remember looking through that book all the time and just uh, just thinking yeah man I should make that or I should and I'm surprised that I never really made anything because I always did stuff as a kid always doing something so however I did used to do the old thing where you get a sheet and you lay it out on the floor and you put the end of it up over a box fan and then you hold it down on each side and you turn the fan on and it creates like a tunnel like a bit you know like a like a tent because you got it held down on each side and then it's held down over the fan on the back and it kind of fills it up with air I used to do that all the time and honestly I'm gonna be 50 this year and I still think about that periodically throughout you know my life and how uh, fun and just kind of again kind of your own uh, escape and uh, getting in there and just like I don't know it kind of lets your imagination run wild and I don't know it's kind of neat how how that happens but uh yeah I, I think it doing that still to this day <laughs> it's interesting I like it it, it just you know, it gets you out of your normal everyday thing in it. Like, see, that's cute. I like that. And it wouldn't last five minutes, of course. You know, it's going to break apart and rip apart and everything else. It's cardboard. But it's still cute for the moment. That's a good little, that's a, that's an okay little story. I like that one. I've seen this guy. I've watched a video uh, on YouTube with him. People talking bad about him too. People are always going to talk bad about people. You know why? Because they're not to your face. They do it online where they can be sneaky and be little turds. No reason to be talking ill of that man. Ah, here we go. Researchers find real life SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Star. Look at that. <laughs> I wish it was just a picture. There. Yeah, there we go. Look at there. 
everyone's favorite underwater crazy duo, right? Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. Eh, I could do the whole song, but I won't. Isn't that neat, though? It's so cool. Beautiful. Our oceans hold some amazing life, don't they? Some amazing stuff. PG&E says it will bury 10,000 miles of power lines to reduce California fire risk. Well, good. About time. All, everything should be underground anyway by now. We shouldn't have all these lines going across our skies and uh, having problems during storms and obviously potential fires and everything else. The first amateur astronomer to ever discover a new moon and it's orbiting Jupiter. Now, how do we know it's a moon when something's that far away from us? How do we know it's a moon? It could just be just a, a rock, a pebble, an asteroid, a, something just stuck in the atmosphere, you know, in, in its atmosphere, whatever you want to call it. You know, I wonder... I wonder how they just determined that it's a moon, you know? Historian believes the Holy Grail and Lost Ark of the Covenant may be hidden under this house in English countryside. Isn't that weird? I was just talking about religion. <laughs> That's weird. Now, having said that, I am an I am an atheist slash agnostic. Uh, just depends on the day. Oh man, that feels good right there. Ay ay ay. Now, do I believe in the Holy Grail and the Lost Ark of the Covenant? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what I believe in. I'll just be honest. It's all a waste of time to worry about because we're never going to know anything about it anyway. It's all speculation. It's all hearsay. It's all, you know, handed down from generation to generation over the past 100,000 years. So, you know... Um, of course, having said that, one of the greatest movies to ever be put on film is Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, you know, I like to escape into movies and, and uh, think these, you know, it's kind of, you know, fun to go along with that. But in, in real life, I don't know. And even if it is real, I don't mean it's anything magical or wonderful or amazing. It's probably got, you know, a, a stick in the in the ark or I mean there's no telling it's probably got sand or or Jesus's head probably got Jesus's head in there you know do I think there was a guy named Jesus sure do I think he was the son of God nope not at all I think he was delusional and he brainwashed people into thinking that he was that's my opinion on that. Again, no matter if you agree or disagree, it's still just your opinion because we don't know. We weren't there, right? That's what's cool. We weren't there so we can all just kind of have an opinion and move on. But you should never teach or preach anything like that as fact because then that's where it starts crossing the line. You can't teach things as fact if we don't know for facts. So there you go. Now this here is, I seen this the other day when it was right on the news. Uh, now that's, that's ignorant. Doritos gives 13 year old girl $20,000 reward for discovering rare puffy chip, which the entrepreneur listed on eBay. Why did this girl get $20,000 for a Dorito that was puffy? 
It was just a malfunction in the making of the Dorito. Why does she get $20,000 for that? Now, I, you know, this is all a positive live stream here, but still. Why does that girl get $20,000 for that? And there's people out there killing themselves to make $20,000 a year. That's crazy. Some things I don't agree with, and that's one of them. Giving, giving money away just like that to the craziest things. <clears throat> I always have a bug. It's probably like a horse fly or something flying into my window. It's so weird. Let's check this out. <clears throat> Blind for 15 years, she now has 20-20 vision and sees her grandchildren for the first time. How in the world? A woman left blind for 15 years has finally regained her sight after a life-changing operation. Doctors believe 59-year-old Connie had glaucoma when she rapidly began to lose her eyesight over a decade ago, but then an athabababa diagnosed cataracts in 2018, one of the most common and treatable adult vision issues. Connie, who lives in Colorado, began noticing halos and prisms of light while driving in 2003, went to the doctor, told she had glaucoma. Three weeks later, she lost even more sight and peripheral vision, doctors believe, yada, yada, yada. Then three years ago, she got the surgery that changed everything about her life. Her right eye was operated on. When they took the patch off the next day, the first thing I saw was the nurse's eyebrow, eyelashes, and pupil. I started crying, Connie said. She had me read an eye chart, and the first line I read was 2020. I had the second eye done right after Thanksgiving. I was seeing 2020 out of both eyes. That's crazy. Diagnosed with glaucoma. And she just had cataracts. Been able to see her eldest grandchild for the first time since she was an infant. And her other eight grandkids for the first time ever. Now see, that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> that's good stuff. I got to watch all the flowers bud and the trees grow leaves, she said. That's crazy. You know, uh, my bike rides, of course I don't cycle anymore, but on my bike rides, a lot of times, that's one thing I enjoyed was seeing the trees, all of nature and the grass and the big fields full of whatever, I call them flowers, but they're probably not flowers. <clears throat> Just seeing all the beauty and everything of nature uh, and the sky and, and just everything. I'm, I'm always about that. I'm always looking around at stuff like that. And... Uh, you know, you take something like that maybe for granted, and then you got someone like this who, you know, they lose their sight, and, and you know, they, they think they're never going to see again in their whole life, and here they are, and they get sight. And she gets to see all that stuff again. Man, that's got to, that has got to be amazing. That's, uh, that's like those people that, uh, they, uh, they're deaf, and then they get those implants or whatever into their bone, into whatever, and and then all of a sudden they can hear after maybe a, a lifetime of being deaf and being able to hear. And it's just so amazing what our scientists and uh, inventors and all that are able to do. And, uh, yeah, it's so great. It's 
amazing. <laughs> it's like some Star Trek stuff, you know? Little boy finds sweet friendship with 99-year-old woman over the fence during lockdown. You know, I think... I think more of us need to do that and reach out to old people because... You know, from my point of view and what I remember, and still even to this day, age, you know, old people have kind of creeped me out a little bit sometimes. And don't take that the wrong way. But, you, you know, you kind of distance yourself from people like that because you're, you don't understand them. But the fact of the matter is, is that lady was the same age as that boy one day, you know, at one time. She she's She's just a... A kid. She's just a grown-up kid with an aging body that you can't help but get. And, uh, you know, I feel the same way. Now, I'm, I'm a long ways from 99. I'm going to be 50 in a couple months. But, you know, I, I see, you know, and I feel and I can tell that younger people look at me differently than what I look at myself. And, you know, you're no longer that young kind of hip uh you know, smooth, you know, stretchy, whatever, you know, plump, wonderful skinned, young, uh, priming your life person anymore. You, you get a little age on you and a little bit more age and, and, uh, and people start to kind of look at you different. Young people start to look at you different. So, uh, you know, even me at my age, I'm, I, I can experience that myself a little bit you know, in your mind, and I'm sure she could tell you too, in your mind, you're still 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old. You feel like, you know, you can snap back into that, any of those years, you can snap back into that mode like that. So sometimes it's hard to grasp that we're years beyond that. And you don't realize that, or you kind of lose track of that, or focus, and and even though you can kind of feel this way still throughout your day, and you know, week, month, year, whatever, life, uh, we've moved on long past that, and no longer, you know, can a once attractive old lady, uh, you know, get with a good looking young guy, and same thing goes for a guy, a, you know, an old aging guy can't really get with a young prime time girl. You know, you've 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 distanced yourself from all that, and uh, you know it's kind of it, it's sad, but it's kind of bittersweet. And you know, we all we're all gonna go through it if we live long enough. But you know, it's kind of long story short. You know. Try to wave and smile and and talk if you can to old people because they have a lot to say. Uh, I wish I would have talked to my mom more about you know her childhood and and past and and just things that she loves and you know things that she don't talk about much. Maybe you know I wish I would have talked to her more before she died. And same thing with my grandma. You know I wish I would have just talked more, spent more time learning stuff and just you know opening up about things and and all that uh, there's there's a lot to be talked about and a lot to learn and you know we're all we're all people and uh, we all start off the same <clears throat> So anyway, guys, let me uh, get out of here, do this, yada, yada, yada. Let's hide those so we don't have to worry about that. And yes, I did make this wallpaper. Isn't that cool? And I got it so it fits uh, both my monitors. I made like a, a wallpaper that it's not just the same picture. It's one continuous wallpaper that kind of goes over to both my monitors so it's pretty cool I like doing stuff like that 
I like doing live streams. I like doing videos and stuff too, but I like it when people take part. I mean, I've been going for an hour and one minute and 20 seconds, and, well, I'm still in here alone. And while I'm still in here alone, it's okay. Eventually, someone will see this, and they'll be like, hmm, I should have hooked up with this guy while he was still alive. It'll happen. It shall happen, guys. It's a part of life. Death is a part of life, and life is a part of death, and death is life, life is death, and death, death, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, what have I got here? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's my new Facebook, uh, whatever. You know, banner or whatever. Made that, I think, today. I think I made it today. I don't even remember. I think my day goes by so quick that I don't remember what I do. Here's this desktop. If you want to look at it. See, I made that. See, if you got two monitors, one monitor is 1920 by 1080. So, in order to make wallpaper that fits both monitors, you got to make it 1920 times 2 by 1080. Because it's still only 1080 high. But 1920 times 2 needs to be the length. So, you, you make your canvas... And then you can do whatever you want on there. And that's what I did. Of course, that's a Blair Witch Project kind of uh, homage. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh. One of my favorite movies of all time. Blair Witch Project. Good stuff. Speaking of, uh, we're going to be having a Halloween party this year. On the 30th, going to invite a few people over and just have a get together and have music playing and the music, uh, have a movie playing on the projector outside and try to have some uh, little uh, kind of party games and kind of just stuff going on and have a good time. Uh, we haven't had a Halloween party in years. We don't really do much of anything and I just kind of, I brought it up. I was thinking about it and I brought it up to my wife and she's like, sure. Okay, so hopefully that'll hopefully that'll be good, and we'll have a good time. And looking forward to it. We're all gonna dress up. It's mandatory that you dress up, and and uh, we decided. I brought it up this morning. I'm always going. My mind's always going. So I brought it up to my wife this morning while I was spinning on the bike. I was like, uh, hey, I was thinking, you know, why don't we have a costume contest, and we'll have like a twenty-five dollar gift card as the prize. She's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. That sounds like an idea. So, yeah, I think that'll, that'll work out. Well, anyway, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. Uh, we're going on a minute and, uh, a minute, <laughs> we're going on an hour and five minutes and I don't have anyone in here, but like I said, eventually, one day, people will appreciate me. It's just unfortunate it's going to be once I'm gone. So, I appreciate people while you can, because we're not, we're not going to be around forever, guys. And so, anyway, check out my YouTube channels, Mikey Sun TV, M-I-K-I-E-S-O-N TV, all one word. I do all kind of great stuff on there, okay? All kinds of good, positive, awesome stuff. And uh, then when you're done with that, go over to my other channel, Old Mental Pickle. O-L-D-M-E-N-T-A-L is one word. Pickle is the second word. That's where you're going to find me live streaming video games. Right now, I'm in the middle of playing Halo 4 on the Master Chief Collection. I've already been through Reach, CE, 2, 3, ODST, and now I'm on 4. So... Yeah, anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in if you did, and even if you tune in after the fact. Uh, try to be a positive influence in everyone's lives. Be awesome. Stay awesome. Now, I'm going to go in my gym and uh, pump a little bit of weights, get this chest looking all sexy and stuff. And uh, So, I'm going to enjoy the rest of my night. You do the same, and we'll see you later. Get up, get out, get red, do it to it. Mwah.
Go check out my channels. Buy some shirts, guys. Okay? Be awesome.